All right. What's up, Never? Cool. So we have everybody, and it looks like we have critical mass. So I guess we can go ahead and uh, kick this thing off. Welcome to our biweekly community call. Thanks, everybody, for taking the time to to join us. We have a lot of stuff this week, so we'll try to to get through it all and also leave time for questions as we usually do in the uh, throughout the call. So let me pull up the governance stuff that we have because there are a couple of things going through governance right now and a couple of things that passed within the last week that I think we should go over. Uh, the most one of the most recent proposals that passed is the uh, RIP 50, which covers the RL Butterfly and De Niro protocol fees. I don't know if we talked about it on the last call. I'm pretty sure that we did, but this was a slight change to um, the way that the fees work with regards to De Niro because it has uh, overhead and operating costs and such. So I guess the difference between um, the way these fees are distributed for anything De Niro related and the way that fees for other stuff are, are distributed is that operating costs are taken out of the revenue first and then the fees are distributed. Um, is that about right, Funky? Anything else we need to? Yeah, that's basically, well, that's, that's the main point is that um, unlike other De Niro, uh, other redacted products, um, there's significantly more operating costs given um, you know, the need to run software on nodes. Um, so instead of uh, gross revenue being distributed like it is for your other products, um, this will be like um, revenue minus operating costs, like EBITDA, I guess. Um, and then the second point is that the other Pyrex uh, products uh, used to have, well, they have a 25% going to uh, the continued development of Pyrex products, whereas this, the full um, uh, fee amount will be uh, used and then deducted from the operating costs. Um, I think there was some there were some questions um, asked before we went to a snapshot, and I think the main point was yeah the, the given the kind of costs involved um, keeping the costs as low as possible is the one of the most important things that we can do to kind of ensure that the the PXC and the Nair as a whole is profitable. So that's something that we're um, keenly looking into and always looking to optimize. Cool. Thanks for that. And Arc asked um, how much we're expecting for, for like overhead. <laughs> what are the costs? I don't know if we have a an explicit sort of detailed breakdown or anything, but yeah. Um, I think it's like it's hard to say. Like the way this is the two things. I think Greens looks at it is that as we scale more, we're able to reduce the costs. Um, so the variable costs will kind of. Uh, become smaller over time and then our fixed cost base will be spread um, larger um, but yeah I don't think I think it's hard to kind of give exact numbers at the moment given that we just launched on Wednesday yeah so we'll see um, and if I ever see a number for operating costs I guess I can share it or something but uh, the other proposal that passed is uh, the proposal to launch a Vaultcraft hidden hand market. So as I understand it, Vaultcraft is a sort of DeFi protocol that's focused on building yield optimizing vaults, and they have a vote escrow token model. Um, that proposal passed, so it looks like we'll be deploying that, I think, in two weeks. So we have a couple of markets going live in two weeks. We have the uh, Beethoven market going live and then the, the Vaultcraft market. So uh, quiet week next week as far as like hidden hand markets go but then uh pretty soon after that we will kick it off and i know i saw a question about pancake swap so i guess i can answer that one now um the question specifically was has there been uh communication from the pancake swap team and i just want to be clear so i've been trying to give people insight into to what's going on with that um we are working very closely with the pancake swap team. We talk to them almost like every day or every other day. They are not who we are waiting on to launch. There is a third party involved in this whole process that is big and due to the nature of them being big, they are relatively slow. Um, yeah, four is a good hint. And um, yeah, so we're waiting on some stuff from them before the actual deployment because they'll add a little bit more 
uh, splash to the to the announcement. So, yeah, we're not waiting on Pancake Swap. We're not waiting on anything on our end. It is still a very collaborative partnership. We talk to them almost every day. In fact, I think Sammy is going on a on a panel with them and Coin Market Cap. Is that this week, Sammy, or is it next week? That was yesterday. Oh, it was yesterday. And and D did it because I was on the Blockmates one. Oh shit. Okay, so never went on there. How was it? Never. Yeah, it was a ton of people asking for airdrops, but uh, <laughs> yeah, hidden, hidden hand airdrop yeah. win. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, the BNB community looks pretty good. I mean, there was like ten other, pro- like a couple other projects there too. Um, so there's going to be a ton of activity on uh, on VE Cake. Hell yeah, yeah, so that was exciting. But it, yeah, <laughs> there was a ton of airdroppers. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I think like that's going to come with the territory of expanding to Binance Chain. I think the audience and user base on that chain is very different than what you might see in uh, some other layer ones. And so that's just going to come with the territory of expanding, but I think it's a good opportunity for us, um, mostly because of the the names that we're able to collaborate and work with and how that'll lend itself towards growth for our sort of more retail facing products like Dinero. Um, so yeah, it'll come with the territory. So if, if anybody sees those, type of people coming into the discord just exercise some patience not much we can do but it'll it'll be a good expansion for us so that answers the pancake swap issue uh and then now we have two proposals i do not think they're live on snapshot yet but it's the policy committee proposal and the code arena proposal uh since the code arena proposal is older uh, i guess we can start with that one and so the idea here is that we are proposing a new partnership with Code Arena. Um, it looks like the thing is called Code Code Blue, uh, which consists of a sort of rolling audit model and bug bounty program. But Never and Funky, you guys are a little closer to this than I am, so uh, if you don't mind, kind of walking through it and explaining to people, I know we've had a few questions about it. Well, yeah, sure. Uh, the main thing is that um, uh, the model is pretty fluid. Uh, we will definitely be working really closely with one of the first people to to go through, uh, like get this white club service from Code Arena. Um, the main idea is that we'd have a rotating uh, couple of engineers that will always be, you know, up to speed with our code base and also like trying to attack it uh, themselves, uh, and you know, kind of work closely with our engineering team to, uh, you know, improve our uh, you know, security practices and keep us in check. Um, yeah. Uh, it's super exciting. I mean, Code for you now is one of the, the biggest brands in uh, Web3 security. Um, so having you know, uh, extensive and also like very regularly um, timed you know, um, security checks is going to help us, you know, especially now. We can try to do a lot of these practices when we're small, uh, so then we don't have to pay the price when we're big. Sweet. And, and yeah, I think we are one of the first teams to actually do this... Uh... We are the first. We are the first team. So yeah. be first. So we get to work with Code Arena first on this, which means <clears throat> you usually get a sweetheart deal. So I imagine this service for other teams in the future is going to be far more expensive. So I think you know locking this in early on is is a pretty good idea. <clears throat> yeah. It, it it there is no Code Arena fee actually for us, um, which is not the case for the people they want to onboard after this. So. That, that is really good, yeah. We're grateful for the invite. Yeah, for sure. And um, by Specs asks, uh, is this also regarding decentralization or more code-wise? And then so never answered in the chat that it's it's everything security-related. So it's almost like we get uh, some rolling audit, rolling audits. Like It's almost like a, a private security team to some extent, um, which is pretty cool. Okay, so if there's no questions on that, I will move on to the policy committee. Uh, Funky, this is your arena, so if you don't mind walking us through this uh, proposal and why we're doing it. Yeah, so for for this uh, policy committee, I think giving a bit of background. So um, the full background is set out in the Commonwealth Post, but basically uh, about a year, almost two years ago, we created the strategic asset committee and the main idea there was that we were getting a whole bunch of yield tokens um, and uh, it gave some autonomy to the uh, policy team in order to kind of sell this yield for other tokens Um, and 
this has allowed us to kind of uh, consolidate our treasury from smaller tokens, but also to kind of uh, also get into uh, certain um, opportunities as well. So it was, uh, gave us the autonomy to kind of rebalance um, away from less strategic assets and also to pursue um, opportunities in the short term if they arose. Um, and then later, um, the kind of the uh, responsibilities uh, delegated to the um, strategic asset committee kind of increased um, to kind of encompass more assets. And kind of with that, we exited our token back position. Um, and uh, over time, there have been some more uh, responsibilities delegated as well, including the setting of certain parameters for um, the Marionette uh, product. Um, so basically what this uh, policy committee uh, aims to do is first of all, to create this committee, um, which would have uh, seven members. Um, the the uh, current proposal um, puts forward uh, four from the redacted development team, um, which are ironically <laughs> all uh, speakers right here, um, two committee members and then one uh, quote unquote leader within the DeFi space. And this is kind of like your, your like Sam K's or your, you know, Maki's, these kind of people um, who can kind of uh, provide their input. Um, and the idea is to kind of uh, make it a more kind of democratic process and um, allow um, more eyes to, to see what happens. And the second point is to kind of uh, delegate um, not only the responsibilities that the strategic asset committee um, has, but also some new uh, responsibilities as well, um, such as uh, whitelisting of hidden hand assets. Um, we've noticed that um, although this process has been good for uh, kind of checking that um, you know credible assets with good liquidity can be used as bribe tokens in hidden hand, um, we've had feedback from partners who. Um, want to whitelist their tokens and start bribing immediately, be frustrated with the time that it takes to do an RFF um, and then go to snapshot. And um, we've also had some feedback from within the team, especially Kubro, who um, was explaining that if we have a quicker whitelisting process, we can also kind of chase um, new bribers by telling them they can, you know, arbitrage uh, the, 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 the bribe opportunities, etc. So that's kind of the, the broad idea is to create uh, a new uh, committee uh, to take over the responsibilities and some new, new responsibilities. I think there's been some kind of interesting discussion in the forum discussions. Um, so I think uh, we won't rush this to kind of voting and we'll con continue to evolve the, the proposal um, with the feedback that we get. Um, I think there was some interesting uh, feedback about um, like the dispute resolution process, if not all the committee members are in agreement with certain kind of actions. I think there's also some kind of uh, discussion around like the, the term or the renewal of the policy committee. So interesting stuff. Yeah. And I, I know that people were asking about like who the candidates are from the DeFi space and who the candidates are from uh, the community, so on and so forth. So I think there's a couple of details there that we can iron out based on kind of what people think. Um, to some extent, I think when it comes to like people from the DeFi space, we'll kind of just have to do a little bit of cold outreach or reach out to our network to see if people are interested. But I think from the community uh, participation perspective, we kind of already have done this before uh, with the original, uh, one of the original committees. So people can kind of throw their name in the hat and we can figure out how to get it through a whole voting process and stuff like that. Yeah, I think, yes, yeah, so the last point, I think there was some feedback as to how we did it last time. And I think we can, we have a lot of learnings there. Yeah, it wasn't um, great. We, yeah. We've we done it before and it wasn't perfect. So we can, we can improve on it. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Monkey. Just, no, that was it. That I was just it, remembering yeah. the trauma from the, <laughs> from the last time. I mean, I think we, 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 we created, some, we had some, uh, some you know yeah <laughs> yeah harkin remembers harkin remembers that's funny uh 
So we just need Funky to record our voiceover telling people Butterfly is a new currency on it. Yeah, so I think I think there is more for us to do with regards to the Funky Elon conspiracy. So yeah, maybe there's some more we could do there. Joker Frog says policy committee evolution is a base proposal. Yeah, I think it's pretty good. Um, ultimately, right. like did we also did yeah, we also yeah. include the hidden hand part? In, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So a lot of those um, annoying votes where you guys have to whitelist new assets. Um, will be streamlined now by a committee as well. So the DAO can be more focused on important things. Yeah, I think the way we're kind of thinking of it from a from a philosophical standpoint is that anytime there are new contracts being deployed, that should be something that the DAO decides on. Um, but for small stuff like whitelisting a, an asset, uh, which is, I know, a pain in the ass, and we appreciate you all for participating as much as you have, even on those like very mundane votes. But... Yeah, so we're, we're trying to find a balance between like what's really important for the DAO to vote on and what's more, what can be deferred to a smaller sort of DAO, DAO approved committee. Cool. So I think those two proposals will probably make their way to Snapshot um, in the next week or two. Uh, I know the policy committee one we just said, we're going to, you know, read the feedback and make any adjustments before that one goes to Snapshot. But uh, the other one should go, uh, the code arena should go on snapshot relatively soon, I think. So, all right, now for the big stuff, um, in case people weren't paying attention or, or live under a rock or something like that, we finally got Pyrex ETH out the door this week. Uh, it was a pretty big launch. I think everything went smoothly and we've had like a lot of questions and a lot of stuff to cover. So I guess we could give a little bit of a state of the union, kind of where we are now on the launch and then what's coming uh, in, in the next few weeks. So uh, this week we launched and basically the opportunity we were able to spin up the fastest was the Maverick pool. And somebody just asked, is Maverick the only LP pool we have uh, or any other coming? So I guess that ties into where I was going with this. So Maverick was the pool that we could spin up the fastest. Um, it's the one that we could have ready to go on launch day uh, they were the easiest to work with to some extent. They're they're matching uh, some of the rewards we're putting on on the pool. So that one was like a good go to market pool that was easy to launch and easy to get rewards going for. As for uh, any other pools coming for PXE, there's definitely going to be more, which we can touch on in a second. But before that, um, pretty pretty good launch, I would say. Uh, we're at around a, I think we're over a million TVL. It only took about 24 hours across that chasm, which is pretty sick uh especially considering the limited opportunities that are available and considering that the yield is not yet uh available for apx eth so i guess we could start there so pyrex eth is or px eth is the only thing that kind of has a yield opportunity right now apx eth will come in the next few days as we spin up validators and never i was going to let you give a little bit of an update on that since we've had a bunch of people asking kind of like what the timeline looks like for APX ETH yield, spinning up validators, and and all the rest. Yeah, just give it time. Uh, validators need to be. Uh, the, we had to like you know. Now there's a bunch of ETH in the in the, in the Pyrex ETH contract. It's going to get deposited to the Beacon chain. Um, to, and then, yeah, uh, the first few validators should be spinning up over the next few days. And early next week, uh, you should be. We should be able to have you know the highest yields on uh, any LSD. <laughs> Sick. So, um, if you're waiting for APX ETH, it'll it'll and come. And that's too. probably that's probably around the same time that like a lot of these um Dex votes go to the DAO. Um, <clears throat> if I don't know who has the links to all of them, but you might have seen that where um applying for gauges for Curve, Bunny, Balancer, um, and getting those spinned up as well. Um, so on top of the APX yield, like the PX ETH yield should also get be getting started around the same time. But obviously, like um, I appreciate everyone essentially pre-depositing before any of that even kicks off. Yeah, hundred um, percent. It, it was pretty cool to see all the support uh, from you know the day of launch to to where we are now. Especially given that like everybody who is participating basically knows they they are early. And Funky just dropped all of the governance proposals that are live right now across Balancer, Curve, and and Bunny. So that's that's going to be pretty exciting. I think once the these proposals 
pass and go through and everything starts to fall into place is whenever we will really start to get momentum. And yeah, somebody mentioned uh, the ledger incident. I'm sure that did kind of dampen momentum a little bit, but I think I think it's fine given that we are in this sort of lull period between the launch and getting all of our, our pools spun up and not to mention all of the uh, partnership efforts that have our, our biz dev team has been cranking out. I think there's going to be a ton of use cases for PXE, especially in the next like month or two, as these teams spin up their integrations and give people cool shit to do. So, yeah, pretty exciting times. Uh, if right. anybody has and, uh, questions, drop them in, and then Sammy, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, no, we we were tracking the ledger situation. Like, obviously, like a couple of people sent it to us and um, we were just aware of what was happening. Like, it doesn't look like anyone got affected from the redacted side of things um, because uh, obviously we weren't uh, <clears throat> targeted in the attack. But um, you guys might have noticed that, like, Ledger was taken down from the wallet and, like, we did um, try to prevent it as much as possible even though funds weren't at risk. Um, so I don't know if the ledger connection is back up, but um, should be soon. Yeah, and and it's one of those things I was getting a lot of questions about whether or not we're gonna put out a statement or whatever else. So like, I I think you know I don't like putting out statements just for the sake of of doing it. Um, I prefer to do it when it's important so people kind of pay attention. I see a lot of teams that are constantly like putting out statements. It's kind of like the boy who cried wolf, and so. If you don't hear anything from us, guys, like you can know that stuff is, stuff is fine. Like nothing, nothing bad happened. Um, I would rather I would rather get ahead of stuff bad happening than you know just constantly be like on edge and you know putting you guys on edge. So uh, that is the reason we didn't put out a statement. I saw like a hundred questions about that. Um, but again, I want to do a, a call for questions on Pyrex ETH related stuff. But if not, uh, Sammy, you want to give a little spiel on Pyrex ETH and how things are looking and um, everything else. Yeah, I talked about it a bit yesterday, but um, I think it was a really, really smooth launch. Um, you guys, some of you on-chain sleuths did not catch it uh, because we were deploying contracts like last week, uh, but um, the the deployer address was like a fresh deployer address, so no one could front run it. Um, obviously, like coming up to the launch when we started working on integrations in the launch pool and stuff, like the banana gun bot caught it, I think, and then that alerted a lot of people. And then also, Zachary tweeted about it early and a couple other things, but like, you know, it looks like no one got wrecked other than bots. <laughs> and like the other thing is that. You know, there was like a there was like a five minute window where like one PXE was worth like eighty six grand or something ridiculous. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, uh, it looks like everything went smooth. Liquidity is in range. Um, deposits are flowing in. Um, <clears throat> we all internally are expecting the deposits to like really start when we have a PXE yield, and then also when we have the PXE yield. Um, but. You know how, uh, for those who have been around, like we like to, you know, obviously like do things slowly, make sure everything's safe, make sure we're doing things one by one. And it's not that much of a window anyways, right? Um, I'm really surprised we actually pulled in a million dollars so far with like nothing live yet. So yeah, we'll, um, we'll get some of these votes to um, the DAOs, get all those pools spinned up, um, get our voting power active on everywhere we can. And at the same time, um, you know, finish up the uh, validator stuff now that there's some ETH in there and get that yield flowing. Um, yeah. Yeah. And never, I wanted to also get a little spiel from you. You guys have been busting your ass on the, the dev side to get all of this ready. So how does, how does that feel? And then how did everything go from a technical perspective and kind of what's next for, for on the technical side? Oh, pretty smooth. Um, yeah, things were pretty smooth. Um, so nothing much there. Um, Except you so were pissed about the gas the prices. Bit. Yes, the gas was pretty high. I, I managed to catch it at some point. But uh, uh, yeah, gas on, on mainnet is pretty cooked. Um, we at least saved like half of the ETH that we were as a, compared to peak time. So 
get some money there. Um, but yeah, over the next few weeks, um, more features um, and expansion on mainnet will be coming. And then the next stop after that is going to be all the uh, all the major L2s. Um, so step by step, uh, let's win on mainnet first, and then um, we'll start moving over. Dope. And what did you all think about the the sort of hype video we posted? Was it worth was it worth squeezing in the summer joke or not? This is an internal debate. So if some if everybody agrees that it was awesome, then I win. But if everybody agrees Ooh. that it sucks, Sammy wins. I'm looking at some of the people here. I think maybe only five percent of the people here will will recognize that joke. Yeah, but they all, everybody loved the joke. So let me, let me give some backstory. Yeah, see, look, we already got one summer mention was worth it. Sammy didn't want me to put the summer joke into the teaser video, guys. Fuck yeah. I win. Sammy, you lose. <laughs> easy. Easy dub for the kid. Yeah, easy win. That's why, that's why you're <laughs> both CTO and CMO. Yeah, that's, that's why I make the fucking all the big bucks oh yeah no i'm just trolling everybody but um yeah it was pretty funny like i actually forgot that we had the the audio clip and i knew that you know we we needed to work that into one of the videos at at some point and that is like the actual audio clip from the actual community call where that happened um so shout out to plunky for uh digging that up in the in the archives uh, we've kind of like immortalized that guy by putting it in a in a video so it was pretty cool to squeeze that in i think you know using it to mark the the beginning of the dinero launch whenever the joke is all about how redacted wasn't going to make it until until summer <laughs> it's pretty funny uh here we are two years later uh somehow still kicking and making stuff happen so it's been a long long journey when's the actual two year in a few days right is it the seventeenth? I think it's. I think it's today, actually. Today. Fifteenth. Yeah, two days after PHC launched. So no fucking way. Day. <clears throat> no, no, it's not the fifteenth. Is it the seventeenth? It's either the seventeenth or the twentieth. I think it was like seventeenth is when the auction started, and then like twentieth is when we went live or something. I don't remember. Gotcha. Yeah, and I think Funky Scared just shared a screenshot of the announcement, and your announcement copy was at everyone dap live. <laughs> <laughs> just the link <laughs> yeah that okay so that was that that was on the <laughs> look that was on the 15th bro yeah i think no i think sammy's right i think the auction was after so that so the dap went live on the 15th and then the auction went live on the 17th and then it ended on the 20th something ridiculously not well planned let's just say that <laughs> but yeah it's cool two years flew by um man time flies but anyway so yeah um i guess a, a lot of people have been asking kind of uh when the, the other stuff of course as we always as we always hear once you launch one product people are asking about the next product and i would say it will be a while um we haven't really started building that stuff out so uh the big focus is going to be growing pyrex tvl because remember that like the rest of the dinero system really relies on the success of Pyrex ETH. So the next few months, yeah. go ahead, Sammy. Yeah, um, I think uh, everyone is aware of this. If, if you're just tuning in with dinero development stuff now, like the stable coin cannot come out until the chain link price feed is ready, which we actually made good stride on last week. Um, I'm talking with them again Tuesday um, to finalize stuff um <clears throat> but um obviously they're like super packed they're like their schedule super busy and um uh i think we found like a really good solution to like get it out sooner than we would have been able to before with like the market price feed um so yeah i'm not gonna tell you guys to like spam chain link and like tell them to launch it because that probably you know, won't help us <laughs> that won't huh? help us i said that probably won't help us if everybody yeah it won't help me. actually like you know I'm, I'm kind of familiar at this point with my chain link troubles how it works and uh basically like we managed to like really expedite the process because 
our BD team did a really good job at like working on integrations and stuff. And then, you know, we've gotten like over 15 or 20 projects to like tell Chainlink that they need a PXC price read, which is like, which helped us expedite it. So yeah, um, but also Redstone will, should be getting uh, spinned up really soon um, once all the other DEX pools are live. So um, I'm not too worried about Oracles, but I think most people are aware that like we can't do the stable coin until the chain link feed is out. Yeah, exactly. And, and I mean, the good news is we will have uh, Redstone can move a little bit faster than Chainlink. And so there are, there are quite a few partners actually that are happy to use a Redstone Oracle for like PXE integrations. So that will be pretty cool. Um, I think I, I don't know what their sort of timeline is over the next couple of weeks or month or two or whatever, but yeah, as soon as as soon as that Oracle goes live, you'll see another wave of of integrations, and then after Chainlink goes live, you'll see an additional wave of integrations, and then from there we can actually start the development of of the stablecoin. I think uh, whenever stuff starts to slow down on the the Pyrexy side, Byspec says they probably think just another stablecoin. I don't know if it's that. Um, they definitely want to work with as oh, many no. projects as they can. It's more so like yeah. you have to be able to prove that there's gonna be demand for the price feed through integrations. Yeah, no, no, they're good. They've they've come around. I take back everything I said about Chainlink. Um, <laughs> they're good, and they like us, so that's good. Yeah, they they're a good team to work with. But the biggest thing is like they have so much inbound demand that like if if you can't prove that there's going to be a ton of integrations and a ton of use for a particular uh, a particular oracle, then or I mean price feed, then they're just not gonna you know move quickly on that which is where we will be this time next year 100 percent uh pressure from pith uh i don't even know what pith is yeah pith, so. with, pith we're talking to also is that an oracle but it's the jump oracle yeah oh. um <clears throat> uh I, I think like like uh never said earlier the main multi-chain push will be l2s first because we have a good reach there then other EVMs, L1s after that. And then I think um, other like EVM L1s, I mean, or yeah. And then I think after that, we'd probably start looking into like, actually we talked with some cool Solana projects and stuff too. And like a lot of, it, a lot of the people that are using Pith are like on chains that like do not have EVMs, say Solana, Eclipse, like those sort of groups of people, Aptos, Sui. Um, so, <clears throat> We're figuring out what we have to do with, uh, with Pith. Actually, the easiest thing for Pith it looks like is having a chain link feed. <laughs> um, so it lines up pretty well with like how we want to expand and stuff, right? So like, I think we'll do Pith after chain link just because like most of the projects we talk to are like depending on chain link or Redstone, um, and Pith is just newer and like has kind of planted its flags on like realms we haven't explored before, um, but that we will explore for sure. <laughs> So I said Chainlink primary and pit sec. Look, Chainlink is our number one priority. Um, we're not insane people. So Chainlink, is, like, it's not that we are explicitly looking to work with, like, Pith, for example, or anything like that. We, for, especially when it comes to Pyrexy, like, the goal is mass integration across every anything and everything, right? That's what makes the most sense, and that's what guarantees success. So it's not like we are uh, prioritizing Pith or anything like that. So... Yeah, Sammy just said it in the chat, like Chainlink is the primary uh, focus and then Redstone's the secondary and then Pith is just an additional option on top of those. And I'm sure if there were other oracles uh, like Teller or something that was willing to integrate, we would go after that too, because why not? Um, the more oracles we can have, the better. Uh, and then when it comes to the stablecoin portion um, uh, of Dinero, like yeah, it'll probably just be Chainlink and, and Redstone um, unless some other contender pops up, but that's the plan. So uh, let me see. Any other, oh, any special APR slash benefits for folks who own RL Butterfly plus uh, PX slash APX ETH? Sammy, do you want to answer that for the recording? Um. Yeah, at this point, most of the, okay, not most of you guys, like maybe 25% of the people on this call are aware that like we're um, <clears throat> constantly evaluating 
the tokenomic scene, um, especially with Butterfly, and um, a lot of you guys love um, RL Butterfly and Pulse Emissions and stuff, so we're looking at options where we keep that in place and try to add more incentive to lock. Um, we're looking at uh, scenarios where we <clears throat> do perhaps like more um, more retail friendly tokenomics, I guess you could say. Um, we're looking at a bunch of different solutions. Honestly, like the only person really spending any time on new tokenomic stuff is is me, and that's even like really little. Um, we want to get the product out first, and you know, I don't think anyone's complaining about um, RL Butterfly at the moment. So like, it doesn't seem like it's a huge rush. But in terms of what the question was, um, yeah, there's actually there will be some cool stuff with a money market we're working with where there'll be like. Um, <clears throat> Uh, more favorable LTVs and stuff um, if you have a butterfly lock position without having to give it up. Um, I won't say the name of the project. Uh, but uh, in terms of like taking it into the actual PXE yield, uh, we thought about it uh, perhaps in the future, but I think right now like we have more than enough shots to fire. Uh, between like getting the PXE, getting the validated yield live, getting the curve yield live, expanding multi-chain, putting to use the treasury, all of these different things, and um, like you know, it, it's not needed at the moment. Like the butterfly lockers will definitely reap the benefits of all of this stuff. Um, but uh, we're playing around with things. Um, obviously, like it'll be a that'll be like a long, long discussion. Um, and it's like not something that the team should probably spend like too much time on while like things are going live and yeah. Yeah, makes sense. And uh, Cab Fam asks, uh, pulse emissions for APX ETH while waiting for validators to produce yield? I don't think so. I mean, we're talking about like a few days um, to like a week at most. Um, we're literally just waiting on the validators to kind of spin up after deposits to the beacon chain and then yield will start. I think it. It's nice that we kind of have this uh, slow sort of roll into uh, sort of broader broader adoption and expansion. And I think like adding butterfly yield to something that's supposed to be centered around uh, ETH yield is, I don't know, it kind of like muddies the waters for no reason. I think if there were too big of a, of a concern, then, then maybe it's worth considering, but for now, not worth. Okay, yeah, it makes sense to you too, cool. <laughs> Glad we agree. Glad this is not an echo chamber. Let's see. Any other question? Everybody says keep pulse emissions. Yeah, I mean, um, most of the tokenomic stuff is in place and staying the same for now. So I think it'll what be is um, What is a palantir stone? Oh, yeah. that's what I was going to ask that too. What is that? Or palantir stone? Palantir. 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 Lord of the Rings. Oh Jesus, we're about to get shit on for not knowing what that was. Oh, Is it no. like? Oh no, I look. I Sammy's not old enough to know anything about Lord of the Rings. I probably know Lord of the Rings stuff. I just, you know, shaky memory. No, I was more of a Star Wars guy. <laughs> yeah, Sammy's twelve. Our twelve-year-old leader. So I'm guessing Saruman is also a character from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> we want bonds with PXE, at least me. Um, is that Bond <clears throat> God? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, we haven't um, done bonds in a while. Uh, mostly because we're pretty well funded at the moment, but I think it's a good way to like um, get PXE adoption going, so... Sure, in the future. I don't see why we wouldn't. No, I didn't mean it like bon that, Bond God. I just knew that it was you asking because you're the only person in this whole Discord that asks about Bonds. I don't even know how many people are on this Discord. Tens of thousands. You're the only one that asks about Bonds, so I know I know you're the Bond leader. Um, Let me see. Were you going to say something, Sammy? Any thoughts of giving a portion yeah, of the original investing back to original V1 holders? Um, yeah, truth be told, like actually the Olympus thing just wrapped up like two days ago. If 
for my other on-chain sleuths that always DM me Etherscan transactions. Um, do they do, do people in the Discord ever DM you guys Etherscan transactions, or is it just me? Not Etherscan transactions, but all kinds. I get all kinds of thoughts. Okay, I get a lot of Etherscan transactions. Um, yeah, it just wrapped up like two days ago. So like now that like uh, it's completely finalized and finished, like we're gonna. <clears throat> Uh, figure out what to do with it. Um, but, like, for the meantime, like, it'll just stay in the treasury. There's no immediate rush to get it back onto the market or something. I think, like, people like the fact that we did it because it took it off the market. Um, so, yeah, like, we just wrapped it up, like, two days ago. Um, yeah. And from my POV, like, I'm not a huge fan of, like, spending a ton of money to get something back and then immediately, like, giving it to other people. Like, I don't really think that makes a whole lot of sense, especially whenever we could sit on our hands and like find a more effective way to to use it yeah sit on it makes sense to me um yeah and funky made a good point like it's not a good time to make the the tau poorer uh in the middle of our biggest like product launch uh, i think that doesn't really make sense like that we just launched a big product that old after it grows we'll distribute plenty of opportunities to to our butterfly holders and such like there's no reason to giveaway free stuff like this isn't a airdrop factory or anything okay any questions that i miss uh by the way colton could you put in the ux of apx ETH, uh the amount of apx ETH minted so you mean like uh like the tvl of apx ETH? is that what you're asking how is it okay well um <coughs> I'll, we'll circle back to that one, Bond God. Oh, there, there's right now 480 PX ETH minted. Okay. And are you asking... <laughs> Hold on. That there's... Okay, so you want both stats. That it, that's what I just said. Okay, so we're on the same page. We're, okay, we're... I think, yeah, someone actually also recommended this. I think, like, the ideal... The easiest way to do it is, like, a ratio of, like... How much of that PX ETH is in APX ETH? Yeah. So, like, you could even do a ratio. You could just do like percentage staked as APX ETH. Um, yeah, keep keep sharing the UI feedback, guys. Like, um, we spent a lot of time on it. A lot of people liked it, but obviously, there's little things that we can fix here and there. So, um, yeah, let us know. Yeah, I think that's a good suggestion. Um, so, yeah. I, first off, I repeated what you wanted right the first time. Then you told me it was wrong, and then you told me exactly what I said. Killing me, bon God. Uh, Vicepax asks, uh, "How's the development of the the merch drop coming in Jan?" Honestly, I forgot. I promise you guys that. Um, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm making progress. Uh, there will be merch in Jan. I promise. I just have to actually like the the hardest part about merch is that is not the design aspect of it. It is the figuring out how to source like a shirt that doesn't suck shit. And so, yeah, like Funky said, I'm going to sew every shirt myself and print them all myself, thread by thread, so that you all know that it was made with love from one of the greatest clothing manufacturers of all time, which is me. Got it? And then there's something else we're working on, which I teased in the last community call, but that is um, coming at a, a later date because we also have to figure out how to produce that. Uh, merch drop for the RL Butterfly... Joker Fraud, you know how expensive it is to get merch made and then fucking send it out? I think we'd have to come up with, like, a a different w way to distribute it. Otherwise, that's just going to cost, like, a shitload of money. It's not that I, I want to be cheap. It's that it's just a lot. And we'd have to, like, we'd have to figure out how it's going to get paid for. So if you're going to vote on that, Joker Frog, for the doubt of to spend money on it, then we can do it. Thoughts, questions, concerns. Because I'm not going to spend my mansion money on it. I have to pay rent, bro. Seriously, congrats on the PX ETH launch, guys. Well done. Thank you. Butterfly team hates holders. Yeah, fucking unbelievable. Depends on how much it would be. I mean, yeah, that's the problem. Like, how many RL butterfly holders are there? What, like 2,000? Could you imagine printing 2,000 shirts 
and then having to mail them across the the globe because like to get a shirt made is what fifteen twenty dollars yeah you i I also feel like a streamer right now, so y'all better start like donating or something what shirt size shirt though I'm a extra extra large. There's a miscellaneous line, miscellaneous line item in the approved budget already. Actually, that's true, but that goes to me to pay rent. So, how do you think I buy all these fancy things? Let's see. It would be a good Christmas gift if we can expedite it. <laughs> There's no fucking way. Um, maybe a New Year's gift. Uh. The 2025 news. Yeah, yeah. Jan 2025 is when everybody will get their gift shirt with PX Heath logo. APX Heath. Yeah. So, uh, there will be merch that is like De Niro centric. So we'll have like, what I promise a hoodie and a shirt. So what I'll do is I'll make the hoodie like redacted, like just redacted branding focused, and then I'll make the shirt like De Niro focused. How about that? Uh, when will <laughs> when will Terrence stop sad posting, dude? Terrence is focused. That's what get. That's what like motivates him on day to day. He lets the sadness push him forward. You should be grateful. Yeah, all the mar- merch launches have been fired. Yeah, I know. And that's that's how long am I gonna have to monologue up here? This is insane. Um, so the. The thing about the merch launches uh, so far is that like we've been able to source quality stuff. The hardest part is like, how do we continue to to do that in a way that's like easy to distribute? I don't know what did what did you guys think about like the Meta Factory drop? Was that good? Was that bad? Was it too expensive? Was the quality good for anybody who bought it? I mean, I thought it was fine, but I felt like it could have been better. I thought the quality was good. Yeah. yeah. I didn't mind it. I was the t-shirt, Coxie. T-shirt we did a couple months ago. Yeah, most recent shirt. So that everybody liked the quality. Okay. Then if, if people like the quality, then we can... Uh, then we can... We could probably do something through them again. I wouldn't mind. Had the original T. Yeah, so... The setup on the original store was a fucking mess. And we had to shut that down because it was just like not easy to no <laughs> like uh, i'm not dunking like on... <laughs> he's so mad <laughs> i don't mean it like that i mean like the logistics of it was a mess like it was the way you had to like hook up multiple like the cards and like figure out you know all that stuff and the quality was good yeah the payment <laughs> the logistics <laughs> figgy's fucking seething right now <laughs> he's Fighting on his, for his, life he's on his couch like with his ipad in his hand fucking banging his fist <laughs> I didn't mean it like that, bro. Um, gear was sweet, so were this. Yeah. Okay, so never is like bullish on Meta Factory, so I guess we can keep doing them. All right, before I monologue for 30 minutes, are there any other like important questions uh, that people want us to, to answer while, we, while we're here? Otherwise, I can shut this thing down because I'm not a Twitch streamer. Here's an important question. No, nobody's fucking donating anything to me. So Here's an important question. Should you be able to buy the merch with PXE? Yes or no? Thoughts. Thoughts in the chat. No. Yes. If no, why no? Oh, well, I mean, you don't have... Oh, I guess that makes sense. People said their PXE is too precious, or one person did. But should you have the... Okay, you know what we could do, Sammy? For the... uh, for the other thing we have planned that's not just like a hoodie and shirt the other thing what if we did like a unisox style like thing where people just use px eth yeah the problem is that like the i think it only works when it's like like those bonding curves only work when it's denominated in a stable i don't know we'll figure it out maybe it means we have to rush De Niro. We'll figure it out. Um, when Colton stream, I'm streaming right now, bro. Nobody's fucking donating. Uh, is Hidden Hand launched on Barachain Testnet? We haven't had time to do anything on the Barachain Testnet. 
um, because of the launch. But I'm sure we could start messing around on there soon. Right, Sammy? My trip. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but let's start. Like, um, like the invites just went out like a couple of days ago. So, um, like when, like not everyone has deployed yet, so that's fine. Cool. Yeah. So we'll get to it. Um, we have access though, which is good. Uh, how much are these shirts anyway? I, I don't remember how much they were on Meta Factory. They were a little more expensive than. I would have liked, but just know that I fought for everybody. I got them to go to the lowest price they could bring it to. So keep that in mind. Uh, okay. You know what? I'm tired of monologuing. So let's wrap this thing up. Uh, thanks, everybody, for coming to hang out. We appreciate all the support this week on the Pyrex ETH launch. If you haven't used it already, go use it. Deposit your ETH. There's no better place to park that shit. Um, and, yeah, everybody, enjoy your Friday. Enjoy your weekend. And thanks again. Peace. Peace. Peace.